Now, of course, the urban infrastructure challenge that we're dealing with around the globe is more than just the physical structures. Infrastructure is also inclusive of all of the services and facilities that are needed to remain the societal or retain the societal conditions that we want. So to help us explore the other side of the urban infrastructure challenge we're dealing with, please join me in welcoming to the stage Owen Golden, our Vice President of the NI Global Energy Segment, as well as Jaws Wenderson of NextGen Consultancy. Hi. Welcome, Owen. How are you? You're doing great. Well, energy and the smart grid are very hot topics these days. It's nearly impossible to open up a newspaper and not find an article about energy and the smart grid. Yet, the smart grid continues to be vague. One reason for this is that the smart grid means different things to different people. In conversations in the United States about the smart grid, you'll hear things like demand response, smart meters, distributed generation. But in other parts of the world, this can go in a very different direction. To demonstrate that, I'd like to have Joss Winder describe the current state of the electrical grid in Rajasthan. Rajasthan is a state in India where NextGen Consultancy and Joss Winder are working to provide more reliable, stable electricity. Yes. Joss Winder? Thanks, Owen. As Owen referenced, India has its own set of challenges when it comes to delivering on the vision for smart grid. To start with, the current grid implementation is far behind that of more developed countries. For example, 400 million people in India do not have the access to electricity. That is more than the population of entire United States, all living without essential fundamental like electricity. Secondly, the much of the current grid infrastructure has been subjected to dilapidation and unauthorized modification over the year. 35% of overall production capacity by Indian utility. I was wondering, is, I have to interrupt. Is this yeah. unauthorized modification? Yes, is that what yes. we're? It's unauthorized modification. This person is not qualified to be climbing <laughs> up that pole and yes. stealing electricity. This is yes. really happening. 35% of overall production capacity by Indian utility is lost during the distribution. So that is a lot of power that could go into those who don't have the access to electricity today. To compound these two previous challenges, India is undergoing population explosion that is difficult to make up with. India is the second largest country in the world by population, but growing twice the rate of that of China, and expected to overtake the population of China by 2030. Wow, 400 million people without access to electricity. Others taking it into their own hands to modify the grid, which, by the way, looked pretty dangerous to me. So how do you even start to approach a problem of this magnitude? Indian government acknowledged the challenge facing with their grid and created a two-phase approach to solve the problem. The plan called Restructured Accelerated Development and Reform Program. The phase one of this program focused on characterizing the current infrastructure so that we should exactly know what we are working with. And phase two of this program leverage the knowledge from phase one to implement the changes into the grid so that we can approve the power distribution and management. You know, I really like this two-phase approach. It aligns very well with our green engineering message of measure it and fix it. So in phase one, you'll be measuring real-time synchronized data from the grid. You can use that to create a high-fidelity model of your system. So in phase two, when you have to fix it, you can pinpoint the biggest problems and fix those first. So what exactly are you working on today? Let me show you. Here is an example of typical substation in the state of Rajasthan. So inside these cabinets are power electronics and energy meters. Next gen work with SARA embedded system in India to develop data concentrated unit for substation monitoring. So the unit composed of single board Rio with custom daughter card with digital input and output, RS-485 communication, and GPRS modem. So we are presently deploying 2,820 of these data concentrated units into the substation scattered all across the state of Rajasthan. This system monitors the transformer control relay at each feeder and automate the reading of meter that already deploy at a substation. So prior to this automation, technician has to be physically present in the substation to manually open and close the switches and to read a meter. Now, the DCU wirelessly transformer all the data in real time to a central server. So that monitors the health of a grid as a whole. So I did like to show you 
the current view of our web application. Here you can see the data at Hathibata substation, the power factor, current, and other parameter at each 11 kb feeder. So with this software, you can dig deeper and look at the data all the way down to 11 kb transformer. So prior to deployment of this automation system, when meter were manually read, it was almost impossible to have any cohesive view of the data or the status of a grid as measurement cannot be correlated. So in addition to this meter monitoring software, the system monitors the health of a transformer into the substation, including the oil temperature and oil level. So this monitoring gives the Indian power utilities with the predictive information of a transformer when it needs maintenance or to be replaced before the failure that could leave the customer without power. So this is an additional step to improve the reliability of overall grid. Well, fantastic. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell us about the application? So in addition to this uh, monitoring software application, the phase one of RAPDRP required the implementation of several underlying software application, and they are CRM, billing, energy accounting, energy auditing, electrical net management system, and geographical information system. And we are successfully able to integrate all the real-time data coming from remote side through this data consultative unit with this application saving the development time and reducing the complexity of a traditional tool. And this is the one of the largest projects happening in India for substation automation. Well, Josh Winter, I want to personally thank you for making the trip here to NI Week to tell us about this amazing application. National Instruments is very excited to be working hand in hand with NextGen Consultancy and Josh Winder on phase one and phase two of this project. Now, it's critical that the people of India have access to electricity. But as you see, this is a very complex problem that will not be solved overnight. But with the data that you're collecting in phase one, you will be able to set forth a plan to modernize and scale the electrical grid to meet the ever-increasing needs of the Indian people. And with all those single board Rio systems that you have deployed, you will be able to reprogram those to solve the changing and evolving needs in creating a smarter grid. Thank you, Joss Winder. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. Good to see you, Joss Winder.